Hello and welcome to another episode of the Top 3 Pen series. My name is Jos Oppelbaum and every Monday we post a new video about the personal Top 3 Pens of Penfluencers. If you don't want to miss out on the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel now. If you've ever searched YouTube for found to pen reviews, you have probably come across the name Chris Rapp. Chris has done reviews on vintage and modern pens for over six years now. He often reviews more affordable pens, which makes his channel a great resource for pen enthusiasts just starting with the hobby as well as the more experienced users. Chris really appreciates a good nip, so it's not really a surprise that his selection is largely based on how the pens write. After you've enjoyed these amazing nips, make sure to pay a visit to his channel. Hello, thanks for tuning in to Apple Boom's channel. I was very honored when Christine pinged me on uh, Instagram and asked me if I would like to do my top three pen videos for Apple Boom. They invited a lot of great pen reviewers to, to contribute, and I am honored to be one of them. You're worthy, you're worthy, get up. Exploring with me my top three pens. They're rotating in front of you, held up by crabs. They're hardworking crabs, and they enjoy holding up pens. My name is Chris. I have a YouTube channel called Pen Talk. I think a nice, simple name for a channel is good. My channel focuses on fountain pens. I've been enjoying my fountain pens for over 50 years, maybe close to 60, but who's counting? And I started writing with fountain pens because I hated a ballpoint. I thought the line at the ballpoint laid down on paper was terrible, it was skippy, it was just didn't look right. So I went to the local drugstore and for a dollar I bought a Schaefer no-nonsense pen that had some cartridges in. I put them in, I put nib to paper, and I fell in love. Fast forward, here we are with these three pens that I'm saying are the top three right now at this moment. And they're here for two reasons. Number one, I love writing with them. They got a great nib. Their ergonomics are excellent. And number two, I love looking at them. And I think fountain pens have evolved into being an aesthetic item, a collectible item, as well as a writing instrument. My main focus is a writing instrument because if it doesn't write, then why do you have it? But we're going to explore these three pens and also talk about some close runners-up to my top three. The crab's going to wink. So back in the 70s, when I first understood that you could buy some great writing instruments at thrift stores and antique shops, because I read a sci-fi book where the main character bought his fountain pens that way. Here's the relevant page where the main character discusses his love of fountain pens and his dislike of ballpoint pens. And I love the way he describes how his mom got him into thrift shops, discovered the bin of fountain pens, and then started collecting pens with names engraved on them. It ends up by saying, they got an egg blue Conklin, and they're scarce now. It's hard to believe I bought only the names I liked. Back in the 70s, there wasn't much information available. The internet hadn't been invented yet. So there's a gentleman named Cliff Lawrence, who had a newsletter that came out monthly, and this was his first publication. I got the author to sign my copy. And this has an incredible amount of information in it, as his newsletters did. And then at the end, it had some pens, and they talked about their value. Here's a dual fold junior Mandarin yellow, current value $15. Pretty interesting. So I enjoy nibs that are on fountain pens. So I appreciate 
the workmanship, the craftsmanship, and the artisanship of a nib. And that is why I have this Santini Libra Caribbean pen in my possession. And that's the first pen that we're going to discuss. So when I review a pen, I enjoy doing a first-person view. The focus of my videos is the pen. This pen is in my possession because I also enjoy watching other reviewers and talk about their pens. So I watched ODE, talked about his wish list for 2021, and Santini Italia pen was on the list. So I looked up their website, and I just immediately found a connection. They focus on their nibs. They make all their nibs in-house. All their nibs are 18 karat gold. Their pens are handmade. They're piston fill. So this pen is now in my possession. Yes, there's some ink creep on the nib, but that's not something I ever concerned me. And that's a beautiful 18 karat gold cursive italic flexible nib. And I really appreciate a nib grind. I've had many nibs custom ground by Richard Binder, Mike Masiamo, by Joshua Lax, and, and others. As you can see, it's inked up. This pen fits extremely well in the hand. It feels great in the hand. One of the reasons why people feel that ebonite might be the best material is it's very uh, good with ink. And number two, it just feels good. I mean, you can polish an acrylic. You can make a pen out of metal. You can make a pen out of precious resin. Say no more. But this pen just intrigues me. It's a beautiful pen to write with. So let's take a look at it writing. We're going to listen to the nib on paper. So when I review a pen, I want to show it as you would see it if you were writing with the pen. Hopefully that may help you decide on whether this is a pen you might want to own or just enjoy seeing me writing. This pen has a great amount of line variation to this nib. Not only does it have that cursive italic grind to it, but it also is very soft. And to me, a pen is only as good as the ink and the paper that you use with it. So this is the ink that's in there now. It's from uh, Three Oysters is the brand. The very interesting bottle. I think it's important to show the ink with the pen. Also show a color card of the ink. And here's where I lay it down very thick. This is where I use a cotton swab. I write with a glass nib usually, and I also do a chromatography. All of these things, I think, contribute to understanding the ink, its properties, how it works, and that's a very intriguing chromatography. Interesting combination of colors to make this very dark, vibrant green ink. Moving on to the next pen is this beautiful, functional Birmingham Pens 6th Avenue and it's a limited edition. They made a few of these. They sold out relatively quickly, but they still make the 6th Avenue pen, and they make them in a variety of acrylics, so they are still available. Not this particular color. It's a very substantial pen. It's a great section. I love a long section. It's just the right girth. There's a great stub nib in it. It fits well in the hand. And for those that post... 
Yeah, it pours deeply and it's a light cap, so it doesn't change the balance. I talk about that and it does fall off. I talk about that in my pen reviews. I try to give you as much information as I can so you can decide where this is a pen that you may someday want to own. So I happen to very much enjoy this nib, and it has one characteristic in common with the cursive italic, is it has a shape at the end. It's not just a round tipping material, and the stub nibs, and I'm a bad artist, the stub nibs are like this, whereas a cursive italic is like that, so it has an angle. And depending upon who grinds the nib, that angle might change a little bit. You know, italic nibs differ from stub nibs because stub nibs are rounded. So this one can tolerate a lot of change in angle where the cursive italic cannot. And other italic nibs usually are much more sensitive to angle. So if, if someone's going to ask, what nib should I get to really be expressive? I'd get a 1.5 millimeter stub. And this ink is Robert Oster Gold Antiqua. So the third pet in this group, the Karis Pen Company Vertex. And as an engineer and a lover of writing instruments, I think this design is amazing in what they've done, form and function. They use a number of different acrylics. This is the third one that I have of the series. So this is a limited edition. It's gone, but if you like the design, find one that you like and get it. Variety of nibs. Pop-off cap. First one of the group that's a pop-off cap. And this has this very interesting design section which is a clear acrylic with a nice ink window there which is visible with the cap on. And when you hold it vertical there's no ink. You turn it around it fills with ink. And this has a double broad Bach nib engraved with the Keras logo and some nice Art Deco design and I love Art Deco. I love my Wall Ever Sharp Doric pens. So this has a different kind of ink in it. You may see some glitter there. It's a Pen BBS ink, and I have a number of Pen BBS inks that have glitter in them, and I enjoy them. Their colors are great. They're nice and saturated. And I've had this pen for a while, and the only ink I've ever had in it is this Sea Flame ink. So with all of you that might have more than one pen in your pen collection, and Maybe more pens that you think you should have, but hey, life is short. Enjoy everything. These are my four runner-ups, and they're all here for one particular reason. They all intrigue me. They all are written with regularly. Those of you that may watch my channel know that I love Pen BBS pens, and this is a 456 model in vermouth with matte gold trim, and it's a vac filler. Pen BBS nib, a little upturn to it. This is a two-tone version. This is a test model that they came out with, the 348. It has an interesting uh, pump filler here at the top. And this has a unique custom ground nib. Hopefully you can appreciate the look. So on one side, it's like a triple broad, writes like a paintbrush. You flip it over and write the reverse side, and it's a cursive italic nib. And we will watch this nib write at the end of the video.
I could be remiss if I didn't have some vintage here. So this is a Waterman's number no. seven, and it has a purple nib. Waterman color coded their nibs for a number of years, and a number no. seven is like a medium metallic. It's also soft, nice keyhole breather. This pen is a workhorse. Yes, it's lever fill. And this is just a standard Waterman 52. And it just writes. I think the number two nib was the best nib ever made in the world for all of history. They're incredibly soft, a lot of them, but you can also get an accountant nib, which is as stiff as a nail. Nice heart-shaped breather hole. This pen has been inked up for many, many years, varieties of different inks, and I've enjoyed every time I've put nib to paper. This is the most amazing nib I've ever written with. The fact that it can go from this paintbrush, which you don't even feel on the paper, to this cursive italic by just flipping it around 180 degrees. It has a little bit of bounce, which I enjoy in my nibs. Arlo Palmer is available on Instagram if you want to look them up. So this is a similar nib to the nib in the Santini. It's kind of like a medium cursive italic, but the Santini nib is better. And I never thought that I would find a nib that was better than this one. Kudos to Santini and being able to replicate something that I thought was only available in vintage. So I dare any modern nib to do this. You got an extra, extra fine and a 4B. Phenomenal variation. This nib to me is just phenomenal. You don't need a large nib. You may like the look of it, but from a writing experience, larger nibs to me can't compete with these smaller nibs, especially a nib like this. So hopefully you've enjoyed this view of some amazing pens that I really love and enjoy. So I've shown you seven pens. My top three at this current moment in time. Some four very honorable mentions, which could have easily been in the top three. I try to present to you a variety of pens from a variety of places that I think are interesting in many ways. And hopefully I show you why they are interesting pens, why they're interesting writing instruments. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate my viewers. I love comments. Please support Apple Boom. I think they're great. If you're interested in any types of pens, reach out to them. Talk to them. That's how we learn. They love their craft and they support the pen community. And for that, they have my sincere respect and admiration. Find a pen you love to write with. Put some ink on paper. Find a friend to write a letter to. Find a stranger to write a letter to. Doodle, draw, sketch, whatever you want, but just put ink on paper. Enjoy your pens. So hopefully all of you are safe, healthy, and happy. Watch my videos on YouTube, Chris Rap 52 Easy to find. Bye.